What's good? This is Be Real, aka Dr. Green Thumb here with another smoke box. We switched up the whip. We back in the glass house. Nice uh, you know, Granddaddy Perp right here, you know what I'm saying? Or whatever name y'all want to give it. But our special guest today in this box, my man Westside Boogie it's lit up in the whip. My boy. Good to have you. I've been in a lot of hostile environments. And I'm scared. It's probably the scariest one for me <laughs> right now. This is not hostile. These two are yours. <laughs> oh, you know it's lit. Yeah, you know I need a lighter, saying? man. Here, I got I'm you. looking forward to this moment forever. Yeah. Uh, joining it's us a great lighter. in the smoke box is uh, Championship Roller uh, Hydraulic. He's back there. You know what I'm saying? And uh, Be Real TV Zone, E Zone. I ain't hungry and we don't smoke the same. And uh, we're rocking these ones on some custom funky fill tips with some red line reserve SOS and uh you know welcome to the box let me uh, try to pace myself yeah you know that's that's what I you know try to tell folks that like that they ask me like how do you do that shit and it was like we pace ourselves we keep real still in here mm -hmm. breathe calmly inhale exhale real quick we don't hold it in that way we don't get that exactly. cough exactly it's a hot box that's right because yeah. once that cough happens it's it's mm -hmm. it's over it's almost like the same breathing you do in like a sauna or a steam room yeah like you don't want to breathe uh -huh. no much of that either but you're exactly. just like i'm just chilling i'm just trying to make it right. you know it's yeah it's like a meditative state i feel you that better be in you know what i'm saying like when people start feeling themselves get too hot they just gotta breathe and be still and smoke and chill. Just vibe out, man. And then it, and then they find themselves like getting cooler. Mm -hmm. Like you know what I'm saying? Ah, it makes sense. Yeah. Let me relax then. Yeah, my bad. Westside, you was born and raised in in, in uh, Compton, right? I was raised in Compton. I was born in in fucking Anaheim. That's what my mama said. I never <laughs> oh. spent no time in Anaheim. She just said we were driving through Riverside, and at the <laughs> hospital we stopped at. No. So I was born in Anaheim, raised my first couple years in Long Beach, like to like ten. They ended up in Compton and never left. You're a Southern Cali baby, you know. Southern what I'm Cali baby. That's right. Shout out to you, man. Shout out to you, man. Same here, cause I like I was I was born and raised in Los Angeles. I bounced around mm -hmm. everywhere. I I feel like I lived in so many different I feel you. different fucking places. Like I know it like the back of my hand is all of Southern Cali, and and it's you know what I, what I love about the shit is that we got so much talent here. You nah, know what facts. I mean? And and people you know took notice into to you know what rappers from cali bring to the table after such a long time where they kind of just did like this to us you know what and I mean? that's because the pioneers like y'all opening the doors for us and you know well i think you coming through the door trying to keep it going opening the door for the, the ones under us you know by saying? god's good grace god's but you good know grace. but i gotta tell you though man it's great when when cats like y'all come up behind what what we've mm -hmm. done and, and what we've managed to do because it's taken the tradition further and it's taken the the movement and the culture further. exactly facts and i feel like like you got that like you know you got that vibe where you're like pushing you know what i'm saying yeah i'm just always trying to challenge myself and i i take so much pride in being one of the faces that represent the west you know what i'm saying yeah so I'm just always trying to like challenge myself, find new pockets, and, and make sure I represent right. You and know you rep it well. Shit. Trying to do my thing, you, man, you know what I'm saying? saying? Make sure my kid proud of me, even though he's a 13 year old who think I'm corny. Everything I do is corny. Uh, so I, yeah, that's I'm going the balance. through it. I'm going through it too. My daughter tough. thinks I'm corny as fuck. Like, is that what happens with rapper dads? No, yeah. it's tough because I go out <laughs> in the world and people be on my dick, and then I get home and my kid like, you're weak. So yeah, it's, like, like, it's tough. He don't so, listen to none of my music. It's too emotional for him. So you know. Yeah, like yeah, it's like when we go on the road, we're titans out there. And exactly. People are like ah, and then we go home. It's like you're the old exactly. Pop. So it's like no, nah, come on, I still got good years here. You're trimming. You feel me? But <laughs> keep me balanced. So I'm it, cool with it. So what you know like. I know you used to sing in, in the church mm -hmm. choir, yeah, yeah. right? Real one for knowing that. Like, mm -hmm. what was what was like the transition? You know, like like, because I know like a lot of folks, if, if they start off singing, that's sort of what the passion is. I yeah. want to continue to do this shit. So most most of them either go into R and B or or, yeah. or gospel music and shit like that. What so what the, cra you the craziest part when I first I was sent to church because I was getting in trouble. My mama just like go to church for my home girl uh, who go to this church in Compton. Ironically, it was gang members that was attending the church also. Oh, so I, that's where I was introduced to gang culture was through church. Through church, you know what I'm yeah. So <laughs> I was I was doing the choir thing. Then the church had me doing gospel raps, but at the same time, I'm hanging with these gang members. So I'm learning how to rap, but then I'm leaving the church, and these gospel raps don't apply to my regular life. Yeah. So I just transitioned, and next thing I know, I was talking about God to 
shooting somebody, you know what I'm saying? And even though, like, my early stages of rap, I was rapping about stuff that I didn't necessarily do because right. I was just trying to follow gangster rap, you know what I'm saying? Right. Thought, stuff that I thought would be cool, and then one day it just switched, and I just started rapping about my own life. So right. I went through so many different phases as a rapper from, like, gospel rap to lying in my raps to finally just being honest, you know what I'm saying? It's all about finding yourself no, exactly. and, and being honest like no, that. Fact. But that's a trip that you, that, you, that you mentioned that because I remember that, too. Like, a lot of... You know, a lot of gangsters that that you know we we were around in our times. Obviously, you know we were in different times and shit. But yeah, a, a lot of our parents were going to church exactly. together. Exactly, and it's so you know they're so tied together and it's so random. And, and even funny. some of the enemies, like their mothers uh -huh. and, and some of the homies, moms, be church. up in the exactly. church together. The craziest stuff. And you might run across each other mm -hmm. in that church, and it's crazy because. Even some of us played sports together. And that's the in, crazy in part about LA. How you could just like somebody could just go to around the corner to a different street as you. Your best friends end up being an enemy. Like, yeah. and it's tough. Yeah, he like, was your teammate on yeah. a football team or a basketball team. It's tough. And now you know he's my bitter rival because he lives exactly. on that block. And, and I hate and I and you know what I'm saying I, it's not to ever glorify the the, the politics of gangbanging or the community yeah. ever, but it's the reality. That's it is what the it reality, is. That's yeah. the reality. If you choose it. That's yeah, what you that's deal what you're with. signing up for. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, and that's what I always struggle with because at this point in my life, I'm more like aware yeah. of the decisions I make. So, if you ask me again, would I get put on my neighborhood at 33? Probably not, just because, you know what I'm saying? But it's a part of my life. It's instilled in my past, right. you know what I'm saying? And I would never turn. I love my community. I love my friends. Right. But it is conflicting because I got a child who I, I'm trying to steer the exact opposite way. And right. it's hard when I'm not leading by example necessarily because right. I'm from this gang. So. But that's that's what it is, though. Like, the fact that you, you recognize that because mm -hmm. that's the evolution. If you're going to be an artist... Yeah, exactly. And you have to let that go. You don't completely let it go because those are your roots. You come from that. Facts. And it's always going to be a part of you. You don't have to stay in that mm -hmm. and, and, like, exactly. you know, to keep, uh, you know, whatever... You, like if you feel like that needs to validate you or or, or make you relevant, that shit, yeah. that's that's just a part of your life at one point. You mm -hmm. have to evolve. And I think some of us that come from that culture and like realize, OK, we got to take care of this business. You need lighter, my boy? Yeah. Oh, no. You lost no. Your joint. Oh. But yeah, I think. <laughs> but, you know, we got to take care of our yeah. business and and become professional. And then if we become family men, we have to exactly. show that example and exactly. lead them out of the way that... <laughs> You know, we didn't want we don't want them to live kind of like our parents didn't want us to be this. Uh -huh. We chose to be it. Yeah. Some of us were born into it because, you know, legacy exists in mm -hmm. gangs, too. But like those of us that lived it, lived it. We don't want that for our kids. So we're trying to like be that. Exactly. Example. And at this point in my life, all I could do is be honest and own up for everything I've done in my life. Yeah. I, early, early on in my kid, I always say early on in my kid life, I just kept trying to hide everything from him, thinking that was the best route. Like, hide the fact I'm from this neighborhood when I really should have just been preparing him, like telling yeah. him why I was clinging to this neighborhood because my dad wasn't around. I was kind of being a follower. Now it's it's my job to like be a light to my neighborhood and me explaining that to him instead of him just getting like ambushed by the world and not understanding nothing about his dad past or anything like that. So, you know, yeah, all I could do is be honest. That's the best thing, man, when you try to shelter and like, you know, put it, sweep it under the rug, they find out. They find out. And then when they time. and when they find out, they usually find out from a source you don't want to. Exactly. I'm going through his text cut. messages. One of my his, uh, I'm going through my kid's phone. He already saying cut, which is already weird because I'm a blood, you know what right. I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So then he they like <laughs> it, I see him like, Yo daddy from Campanella and I'm like, why are these little random boys knowing about my life? It's cause I'm talking about it in music, forgetting that I'm a real rapper, you know what I'm saying? Right. It's gonna get to my kid regardless. So Yeah. That moment was tough. Yeah. It it has to be because I know like some of my homies that I banged with, right, no, she okay. with with their kids, like some of them, like I made sure I kept my son and, you know, like away exactly. from that. Right. Mm -hmm. But some of the other homies, right, like, you know, whatever their relationships were with their kids. They, they never wanted them to know about the shit, just like uh -huh, just exactly. like us. Right. But they weren't honest. Right. And. They would there whenever they'd go back to the neighborhood to visit like a, a family member that still lived there, like yeah. aunt, cousin, grandmother, whatever, you know, and people find out, oh, so and so's in the hood. Let's go, let's roll up and mm -hmm. you know. And then they start talking to the to the son 
or the daughter, like, Tell you know who your dad yeah, is. Your crazy. dad's an OG. Uh -huh. You need to be living up to that. Or when mm -hmm. you going to come put, or like, get your stripes or whatever, either trying to recruit. Thanks. Like, and that's legacy right there because, you know, you, you have a choice to make right there. You could either be down or like, oh, no, 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 no. I seen what this did to my father. Uh-huh. I don't, like, I, 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 like, half of my father's life, he's been in and out of prison or in this life right here. Mm -hmm. I don't want that. Or, like, I got to live up to my father's The, cra name the craziest part, you know, because the world glorified, like, like ignorance and, and struggle, you feel me? And the craziest part, I've called my kid, like, because I raised him. He's not Silver Spoon Red, but I took him, like, not Silver Spoon, but I took him away from all that. Right. You know what I'm saying? He don't That's struggle like his friends. But he be feeling guilty because his friends struggle more than him. Right. And he feel like they cooler than him just because they live in a harder life. Mm -hmm. And it, it kind of, I be seeing him trying to be cool and, like, you know what I'm saying? Following their footsteps. And it's like, boy, you know, you need to take advantage of this life you got. Bro. Right. The world we live in is a crazy it's, place. It, it's crazy because at, at their age, if we had the Exactly. I'd be like, boy, I'm ready oh to take God. all these opportunities. <laughs> I'll be up. Yeah. I mean, they got it a little bit easier, but they got shit twisted. Exactly. And yeah. that's the crazy part. That's why it's like, damn, struggle did like build character for me and maybe like be more grateful for stuff. But yeah. it's like. I didn't, I shouldn't have to struggle to learn to be grateful, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I think, you know, when you get blessed with the opportunity, opportunity to do some shit and you got that work ethic and the passion enough to go, yeah, I think you, you got to be yeah. having that gratitude and grateful right. off top. Right. You know, and the fact is not many of us get out of that life. No, There's more opportunity for it, us yeah, to exactly. get out of it now. But it's, it's so rare. It's like. It's like NBA players. It's not like it's not many people making. Man, you just people. I think people look at because they see basketball on the TV. They think it's just so much. It's possible for like everybody in the world when it's only yeah. like sixty players in the league. Yeah, you feel me? It's the same thing. It feel like we game banging. People don't make it out. Like it's yeah. like and it be people trying to chase this life. But I'm like one. I'm like so rare because nobody really make it out my neighborhood besides like Mossberg was the last yeah. person I could think of from yeah. my hood that made it out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. It's it's crazy. The motherfuckers be just just getting that shit kind of twisted like they, i'm you know, high as a bitch we all up here <laughs> um because you know what's 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 trip what's a trip is it you know a lot of us we, when we were like trying to get into the music shit we were trying to like you know not bring that shit with us mm -hmm. you know those so to not fuck up this good shit that we got going on like we got an opportunity to make something so we got to kind of push this over here. We got to be proud of where we're from, from and represent it. But we got to fucking take care of this business over here. And it can't, you cannot, you know, have, have it cross. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it seems like in the last, I'm going to say 15, 20 years, motherfuckers have been bringing that shit into the game with and them. It, for me, I get that because for me, it's more survivor's guilt that I deal with being, feeling like, Sometimes I'm benefiting off my neighborhood just because the world glorified game banging. Yeah. And I don't never necessarily want to claim it, but I'm going to take the glory because, you know what I'm saying? Right. It, it just comes. And so I'll be having survivor's guilt because I could go home to my crib, right. but they still got to be in the hood dealing with that. Right. So I find myself overextending, like bringing people from my hood that probably necessarily don't even care about me just because I feel guilty. And that's something I'll be having to check myself on because it shouldn't, you know what I'm saying? I worked, I sat in the studio for that shit. And yeah. so I should be real mindful about the people I'm bringing into that space. But I do get caught feeling guilty and just bringing my whole hood places. Right. And it get tough. Hey man, you got blessed with a gift, you know what I mean? And, and like to focus on that and hone in on that and not have any distractions or obstacles or motherfuckers that would fuck that up for you. You know, that's, it's key to, 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 to like recognize that and like keep all those things out that would affect mm -hmm. that. Cause like, that's, that's, that's the door of opportunity right there. That Like that gift to create yeah. and, and it puts something into the world. Like whatever your thoughts are or feelings are, man, it's a big fucking thing. And we only recognize it later after we've been nah. in a few years in the game and recognize what the fuck it is and what we have in nah, our hands. Facts. Cause at first, I don't think we recognize it. And, and not, Cause there's no training course for how facts. this shit, you know what I'm and saying? And then when you realize you got it, and I think back of all the times I misused my gift, like every time I was like, let other people steer me away from my path that I know I was supposed to be on, I'd be pissed at myself. Like, God damn it. I got this, really got this gift that I should be like taking advantage of, but you know. You gotta learn, I guess, trial and error. Well, hey, shit. 
you 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 find it's it like finally, therapy for me right now. I love this. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Right? It mm-hmm. finally clicked clicked in though, right? Yeah. Like the fact that you had this gift, you had an opportunity to do something different, and not not allow those same things to happen to your family and mm-hmm. your son and all that. Get him out of that situation and give him something different, a different option. Exactly. You know, hey, look, people are gonna choose what they choose later on in life, but. As long as you show them something different. Yeah, all I could do is plant the seeds. Yeah, all you could do is plant they the gonna, seeds. They're going to choose what they want. Yeah, man. I don't understand how y'all be doing this. <laughs> oh, we trained for this. this. Crazy. We trained for this. <laughs> yeah. I'm just picturing the air I'm going to get when I get out of here. <laughs> right. It's like water in the desert. I miss air so much. Yeah, we miss air in here too, but you know, it's... Great convo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, like, so, why so... is this not even burning? It's just a slow burn because he wrapped it tight. God, who wrote this? Uh, that was probably Aton. I gotta take our, my, I gotta take my jacket off. Our second, you know, he's our he's our uh, ranked number. What? What would you call him? Runner up. You're retired, Runner so up. he's got to be. <clears throat> no one has the belt since you retired, so I would say he's the number one contender. Hold on, who retired? Runner up. Uh, the pro, the the, the, oh, the champ back here you. retired. So these joints are rolled by Aton. He you, you that makes him the runner up though. Okay, yeah. Uh, this, <laughs> little, this will show you good. Huh? Yeah, take that one right if there. If that was this, a little tight. If, if that was no, little... it's hitting good. It's just like... <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, it's high. hitting slow. <laughs> it's hitting slow. Yeah, but see if like... a blunt smoker smoked our style of joints, they would like it because they like that mm-hmm. slow burn. I'm also like a gravelly smoker, but I know y'all hate tobacco in here. <laughs> uh, we've had we've had blunt smokers I've in here, smoke here. Yeah. What, for real? Yeah, yeah, we're not afraid. But it was only on special occasion though. That day Snoop was. I really if you had wanted one, we would have made it happen. <laughs> oh man, see, if I had known. But this is getting me way higher. So well, there it is. Doesn't it taste better? It do. But I realized later on in life I'm addicted to tobacco. Like uh, I love smoking, but I do. I am. Did you smoke cigarettes before? Never smoked a cigarette in my life. Was through the blunts. Uh huh. Do you see think- that's. That's key to let people know right now. Never smoked a cigarette a day in my life. Motherfuckers that never smoke cigarettes a day in their lives addicted to tobacco because of the tobacco leaf that they smoke the blunt with. That's that's real shit right there. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's why I try to convert people yeah. to, to smoking papers again. You and know and, and I mean? if I could roll like this, I'm pretty sure I would smoke we more could paper. We teach you, dog. This is like a science. I don't understand how the fuck y'all did this. <laughs> this is crazy. We got you. We'll teach you this, man. This is Green Thumb University. We, we you know, mm. all, all levels of highness. We I feel teach. like we're in space right now. <laughs> we, we might as well be. Don't you think it would be more convenient, though? Oh, I got water. Have yes. rolled up? Like, yeah. instead of like. Hold on, bro. You seen that show, Hot Ones? Yeah. yeah. yeah this feels like when they trying to talk to you. <laughs> when you going through it. <laughs> I'm like, hold on, my boy. I I'm like, when, you. Drink, when Shaq drank that water. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Water <laughs> makes it. Yeah. Well, at least for the. At least for that <laughs> shit, water makes it worse. You got to have milk. <laughs> or like oh, some sort of ice cream. I mean, we will make shit. you sweat too, but just not on that level. Yeah. Yeah. Only if you like depleted of oxygen. Yeah. Yeah. I just, for sure. but, uh, to add on to the whole. Blunt thing, I think it, it just—it's more convenient to have like a stack of twenty joints as compared to how, how long it would take me to roll twenty backwards. Bro. Ah, it, very it should be true. Tedious as fuck. Very bro. true. Oh and yeah. The way it burns too, I'd be, I swear to God, they I feel burn like, stupid. Yeah, if, I, if it burns burn. lopsided, bro, I'd be uh-huh. hot, bro. I'd be going back to the store, telling them like, "What the fuck, bro? How long y'all had these here?" Yeah, <laughs> tips is hard. Papers don't do that. And yeah, these are called funky filled tips. They're so, did you convert? Tips. You started off with papers? Did you ever? I started with papers and then. I took a trip to the East Coast mm-hmm. um, in, I'm going to say, 88, 89, around there with DJ Muggs. And I noticed that their whole shit was blunt culture. Like, I didn't know right. shit about uh-huh. that, right? But I learned it right there, and I brought it back to L.A. and started teaching my homies how to roll with the blunts. And then when we did our first High Times cover at Cypress Hill, and uh-huh. it was... Um, it was we had the cover and then the centerfold piece was uh how to roll a blunt and i you know people on the east coast knew yeah. this but everywhere else that it wasn't necessarily smoke culture for them it uh-huh. was either a pipe a bong or a joint or something like mm-hmm. that right um so that that's how i got introduced to blunts and i smoked them for a few years but then i realized it was fucking up my voice and i had a lot of build up here 
Plus, I was drinking a lot of whiskey, and we were on the road, and it was fucking up my voice. So I let go of the blunts first to see if that would help. And I got went back to papers, and I, yeah, there was a change. I was not spitting up that shit from the tobacco leaf. Right. And, and, and my, th- the, my throat didn't feel all scratchy and harsh. And then I let go of the whiskey, because the sugar in the whiskey and, and that shit... Um, would scratch up my throat too. So like I realized yeah. I can't drink before a show. I, if I'm gonna have it, I gotta have it after. So and I know they used to be touring like crazy, man. Oh my god, still, still. I mean, you know, right now because of all the shit, it slowed down. Yeah, yeah. And it's starting to get back. But the yeah. fact you still want to tour oh, is yeah. amazing. We're like, we're competitive like fire. Right we want to go up there. Lose my competitive spirit. We want to go up there and chop motherfuckers' heads off. You I know? love that. <laughs> See, and I feel like that's missing in rap right now. Like. They not really doing that. Everybody want to be like groups together, all the rappers, which is cool. You know what I'm saying? But this new heel world, you got all the rappers not want to compete with each other. Everybody and like, wants to be friends and do Yeah, and I'm trying to like... Well, it's, it's great to be friendly, but yeah, you got to have to compete. Yes. Because, I mean, that's what hip hop, you know, the spirit of hip hop was built off that. Exactly. Who could rock the set harder? Right. You know what I mean? All these DJs that, that started this shit, it was like they had their sets and it was like they were building their reputations on... You know, we rock the hardest set over here, and that's hip hop. Was Auto Tune out back then? No, no, no. They weren't. It came, it came later. You know, what was out back then? That was like it. It was like the first version of what Auto Tune would become. Was uh, what was it? it what was it called? Zap and Roger. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Computer um, love. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Isn't that through a tube? Yeah, it's like this tube. Uh, I can't remember what the fuck it's called, but um, I do know what you're talking about. Roger though. used to use it. Peter Frampton used it. A uh, whole lot of artists used it, and and that was like the precursor to to oh, what is auto tune. The rap cheat saying? code now. That's the rap cheat code. The mm-hmm. hack code. Yeah. It's tight though. Yeah, man. It's tight. Hell yeah. You, you're working on some new shit right now, or you just finished up? I just dropped uh, out my second album, got that out the way, so now my competitive nature got me ready to get it right back one. in the studio. And that's the climate we in now, you know what I'm saying? It, it, don't nobody really got the luxury to just sit around. Yeah, you know no, what I'm saying? I had, I had a three-year gap, and I'm grateful that my fans stayed that long. I had to do a lot of growing, but this time around, I'm trying to keep, keep dropping, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. You got. I think you got to stay busy. If it, If... If you're not dropping music, doing shows, exactly. doing something. And it's it's harder now because I grew up like when it was tight, it wasn't no social media. So you didn't have to let people all in your life every day. You know what I'm saying? Right. It, was, it was like a mystery be, behind the artist. It was right. a mystique y'all had. And now it's the opposite. It's now the, opposite. the power is based on how much you let people in your life. And that should be irritating me. That's another gem you just dropped right there because people don't realize that. Back in the day yeah. before all the platforms existed where you got to throw content mm-hmm. out there, the mystery of an artist yeah, was everything. Exactly. It, it built up the want to like find out about their music, you know, um, where are they exactly. playing, what's their merch, you know, it built that shit up. Now it's like, okay, well, what's your new shit? Because exactly. we just saw what your mm-hmm. last shit was. What's that new shit coming? What'd you eat for breakfast? Yeah, what'd you, what'd you eat for breakfast? Yeah, it's like, God damn. What you smoking on right exactly. now? Exactly. All that. And I come from the other world, so, you know what I'm saying? It's it's crazy yeah. having to keep up with all that shit. Nice like, stuff. if you're going to use it as a platform to, like, promote yeah. yourself or your art or whatever the fuck it is, um, yeah, it's crazy to keep up because it's it's like math. You got to do it every fucking day. And yeah, I've had, you, and I've had bitter, and I've had bitter moments because of it. But I've come to the point, except to like, if you're gonna choose to be in the music industry, not just do music, but the music industry, it is what it is. You gotta, you know, yeah. what I'm saying, Ad- adapt with the times or get left yeah. behind. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, if you're gonna have the platform, you gotta kind of go yeah. in, and if you, if you're not, you might as well not have it no, and exactly. just go the traditional exactly. route and just do music because you love doing it and whatever. Yeah. It's 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 fucking crazy what it's become, but I mean it's it's still great doing it and performing. Yeah, and and, and, and it is positives in it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We got more power now because yeah. of Instagram. We could like go viral at any given moment. Any given moment. So it, it give more more up and coming artists a chance to change their life. But what what were you listening to before you were before you were recording your album? Uh, this I, I'm a big Lauryn Hill fan. That's like my favorite artist of all time. So my favorite rappers of all time. Would probably be Jay, Wayne, and then Kendrick, different eras. So you know what I'm saying, Kendrick from my neighborhood. So 
That's that's like always gonna be like big for me. That'll get you in, inspired you for sure. Because those are like top top but also, motherfuckers. I've been right listening there. to a lot of ratchet shit lately. So a lot of local LA ratchet music. Yeah, yeah. It's like I love <laughs> I love getting ignorant. So listen, I, I think everybody has to have a little a balance, bit of that man, balance. Yeah. Cause you know, I know for a time a lot of the the golden era, <clears throat> us golden era rappers, you know, we were a lot of us were only listening to the shit from our time. We were like that's fine. Listen to anything else, right? And it, it was like it, it cut the bridge off between, you know, our school and, and the new school. And, and it, it, it created tension there even. But I think some of us that were like, yeah, let's listen to that. Uh-huh. Let's listen to what these motherfuckers got. We recognized that two things. There was obviously trash out there and trash exists in <laughs> yeah. our in, in our era too that's funny there was, there was plenty of trash Burn. in our era too like, like no even in our era there was plenty of garbage you know what i'm saying but there was gems too there were dope fucking new joints that you could listen to and be like yo they snapped on this and then the other ones where it's like it's like ratchet is not necessarily yeah. on this level over but here you hear it. You hear but you hear it and you're like okay i fuck with yeah. that yeah, that's how. You know I mean. what I mean, and I think I think you need a little bit of that. You know, not take yourself so fucking serious all the time. You know. Man, I wish I could have been like on in that time, and just to like just feel what it would have been like. Like the the go that's the golden era, like you said. Oh, it was crazy. But I'll tell you what: when you tour in Europe, they still have that feeling. Bro, like, that's the best place to perform in the world. Yeah. It's over there because it's like I Where's I love your favorite LA. spot out there. I, I just know London is my favorite place. Yeah. London, and I like somewhere in Australia. I liked. When yeah, I went Australia with Eminem. But Eminem fan base is also like you know, yeah, they just crazy. So when he took me out there, this was a different type of feel. Oh so. yeah, how'd that feel touring with him? Uh, it was crazy being in front of eighty thousand people. You know what I'm saying? Coming from three hundred people venues a week before, so it was a crazy shift. And I, I clubs, forever, blue arenas, exactly. So I forever be grateful. But uh, also realize I still give the same energy whether it's 300 people or 80,000 so it's like the same type of adrenaline honestly so that's what's called being a pro no I love that shit you know what I mean it's like you can't you can't short people just because it's you know this small in comparison to you just came yeah. off from a festival that's 170,000 people or yeah. whatever you know what I mean cause I didn't perform for three people yeah and then three people have been my fans forever just cause you know what I'm saying? I built that organic feeling with them. They see me come out there and still get my all when it was just three people there. Yeah. And people, these artists got to realize they got to go outside and do these small venues now. Cause yeah, you never know who's watching. Mm-hmm. You never know who's watching. If you give that half-ass shit, somebody important that might have been there was like, ah, you know, I was thinking about putting them on, but they were real half-ass this night, and it just turned me off. Thanks. Like for me, and I always did it like you know what it doesn't matter if like you said if it's a hundred or a hundred thousand we got to rock it the same Mm -hmm. and and put that energy out there because you know just going through the motions that ain't it no it's boo-boo who want to live life like that yeah that's boof man you know you you love what you do so love it and love it enough to where they're entertained from it nah facts and i just was i just think back all the times like this is what i wanted i was really in my mom and crib dreaming for these moments and I can never like take that for granted no matter who out here I'm like rapping right now in front of people so hey, like, yeah we both dropped bars right there there was bars right there we got bars right? well we run this back mm-hmm. there'll be bars right there hella bars <laughs> we gotta drop some bars together for sure though did you know I was at that soccer game with you yeah oh okay I was about to say yeah that shit was lit <laughs> yeah I saw you there <laughs> man that shit is crazy right that was my first time ever at a soccer game so it was crazy I've been a fan of the team, but I didn't really follow it like I'm following as much now, right? Because mm-hmm. most of the time we're on the tour when when these guys are oh, in the season. Oh, yeah. So we never had a chance to go to the games uh-huh. and necessarily watch because we'd be in Europe most mm-hmm. of the time. But in the last few years, we had a chance to get into it because we've been home, right? Obviously. Uh-huh. And um, Flick, and uh and uh LA, lafc rich reached out to me about doing Fire. this song with with uh with the uh, ink and uh and flick 
and I did the song and then they started inviting me to the games uh -huh. and, and so I finally was able to go because you know we we stopped touring for a second and uh it was crazy I, I, for, at first I was sitting on that sideline section uh -huh. you know where we saw yeah, yeah. each other right but I was noticing that the 3252 section where it was just fucking going off like crazy you for know real? what I'm talking uh -huh. about where but, where the, the most where of the people were at? Where all the drums? No, nah, that shit is nuts, bro. Right? It's the greatest shit ever. Hey, so I told them, hey, next time I come, I want to go in there you and, wild, and play the drums. Oh, right? So they took me up there, and it was uh, Shavo, Exhibit, and myself. We all played drums up there. I know they was looking and, like, what the fuck? And it was the craziest shit, right? So then, so then they they. I tell him, hey, look, anytime I'm in town, I'll come play drums. Me and me and uh, our drummer from Cyprus will come mm -hmm. play up here, right? So we go up there, and we've been playing with them in the games that we could make. And when they score, and that section yeah. was crazy, because because I know you was up there for a second, right? Uh -huh. um, when they score, everybody throws their fucking beer. That's literally was about to, I was about to say. They throw their beer, they said straight up, though. Straight up. And it lands on no, us. I didn't fucking go over there. You oh, know, my I God. Right there with uh, the you clean get showered, bro. bro. Like, yes. yeah. Oh, man. That's, that's nuts. That's, I got to learn to love a team first. like, I, And then I'll be with me getting beer thrown at me over this team. You know what I'm saying? That was my first game there. Oh, no. Okay. I, you know, we were totally with it because yeah. we noticed that, you know, in that drum section, that they had never stopped playing through the whole game except for halftime, right? Like they'll take a five to 10 second break. Mm -hmm. They go into a new rhythm. So we had to learn that pace. So even if the other team scores, they're still playing. Oh, fuck. But when we score, it goes ape shit crazy. The flares start going off and then the drinks start flying, man. Hey, look, I smelled like a fucking brewery <laughs> after the last game because they scored like three goals. So. That's how, that's what my kids said. My kids said, Dad, they not going to stop playing? <laughs> they just kept playing the whole time. Okay. I was like, they got so much stamina. Yeah. I burnt, we burned like 1,200 calories up there. That shit, shit is nuts. And the well, fact you did it is wild. No, we do it every time. I'll be up there Friday. It's nuts. That's fire. What's, uh, what were you going to say, Zone? No, I was going to say, man, you just, you know, you can't even get me at them throwing the beer. Like, after like after I got soaked one time, I was like, you know what? I'm going to have a reserve beer Fuck it. just to fucking throw it and get even, bro. So, like, I started just being like, all right, dude, if I get wet, somebody in the front getting that poop, bam, I'm going to throw my shit. <laughs> <laughs> a whole one? Yeah. Right. That's what we do. <laughs> You gotta have a reserve beer. Gotcha. God <laughs> damn, man. Yeah, it's I, it's it's fun going to those games. I mean, I go to Laker games, and it's cool because you know <coughs> I'm, I've been a Laker fan uh -huh. since I was a kid. I I was there for some of the championships with Shaq and Kobe, fire, and all that. And it's great. You know what I mean? Like it's it's a great vibe. And I've, I've been to Ram games. Great vibe been to the king's game really fucking cool vibe but nothing is like better than that, that huh i've nothing. been to a basketball game too that was a but that soccer game was the most lit shit ever clipper games are pretty lit I, look i'm a lakers fan but i'll tell you if you go to a clipper game their their in between game um presentation mm -hmm. like how they get people go crazy pumped up it's it's off the chain they do it right i'm a chris paul fan so i yeah. just follow wherever chris paul goes that's yeah. my favorite team yeah, he's on. He's Phoenix right now. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. We took an L in the playoffs. They started chasing him on defense. You know what I'm saying, yeah. making him play defense. They got a good team. If they keep that together, you know, they could still make a good run. I yeah, mean, they was trying to trade Aiden because they didn't want to pay my boy. But, oh man, but we they're kept, crazy. We, we kept him though. Yeah, they were he's, trying to slide and get KD. I heard or something like that. Hey, that dude became a star. He did, but that's what Chris Paul does. He he turned him turned him into a star. Yeah, I say that he was too. gonna be a star too. Though. I don't want to downplay him, but you know. I don't think nobody expected that from that dude, that he was going to play that Facts. hard and be a factor like that. But next year, he's going to be beasting out. I am so high. We're amazing. <laughs> we are right here. We are in the pocket. Crazy. You got any shows coming up? Yeah, I'm going to start my tour uh, for the album September, like, 13th or something like that. I just threw out a date. I know it's in the middle of September, but going on tour for this album I just dropped so y'all go get y'all damn tickets 
Word up, man. Hey, look, I want to thank you for jumping in the box with My us. My boy, I survived. <laughs> you, you Woo! Been, you've been baptized. I survived. <laughs> Play with somebody else, man. <laughs> I was nuts. Hey, I want to send you all the love and all the positivity, man. Whenever you want to drop some, whenever you're going to drop some new shit, you got to come back in and we'll sit up at the table on the Dr. Green Thumb show. Oh, you're doing that today too, right? Oh, I guess so. Look, I thought it was an armrest. That's how high I am. I was leaning. Yeah. Right, in man. the lack, I had an armrest. You know what I'm saying? Sorry, man. It's all good, man. Appreciate hey, much, you having me, bro. Much love, Westside Boogie. Let them know where they can follow you at. Westside Boogie on Instagram. Just spell it out. You know what I'm saying? And on Twitter, it's WS underscore Boogie. More black superheroes. Go stream my shit. Thank you very much for watching. Leave a comment. Um, smash the like. If you're not subscribing, subscribe. Get down with Be Real TV. Check the Dr. Green Thumb show Monday through Friday live at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And uh, get down with us. Get down with my man, Westside Boogie. And uh, stay smoking that good shit. No boof. No boof. Positivity to you on the behalf of Hydraulic and E-Zone. Peace. Got the heart of a lion. Soul of a titan. Mind of a genius. Flower with the heightened. All your senses are senseless. Resistant, relentless. It's what they call you when your grind is endless. The skeptics. They say I'm psycho. I move weight like lipo. Got a big crib like Michael. Out the window with a rifle. My wrist game on light show. I'm backstage with white hoes. I got pre-rolls in that red cup. That's key line.